All right, guys, in today's video, what we're going to be working on is we're on this 2013 Avalanche, and we want to make it where we can put a cabin air filter in here. So this particular model was a cabin air filter delete for these years. Uh, GM realized the mistake of doing that, and they came out with a retrofit kit to fix that. So, if you know, we take a look at where we expect to see the filter go, right, we can see that this whole area is just covered. There's a cover here. And we have to cut that cover out in order to be able to put the filter in. So what they have is this service bulletin where they talked about this, right? Came out just uh, at the end of the run in 2014. It covers 20, 2007 to 2014, these models. And basically, you know, customers complained about the fact that there was no cabin air filter on these models. And so what they go through here is to show you that, yes, this is a cover that needs to be it's molded into the plastic, needs to be cut out and removed and then sanded and finished so that you can insert the cabin air filter. There's a cover that will then hold the filter in and then a, a screw that will secure it. Right, and they just walk through this. There you see how the filter normally goes in. Normally you only have to remove the two screws. I'll show you how to get this, this uh, base cover off first. Um, but we took the whole thing off with all three to do this retrofit. But after that, just the first two are enough to get this filter bent up in here, leave the tab out to pull it, and then put the cover back in. So that's the job that we're going to be doing. And then there's the screw right there. And that screw gets tightened to 14 inch pounds when you get done. And so this kit, this 227-59-208 that they talk about, and then the two different types of filters, whether it be just a a standard paper filter, which is a particulate media, or if it's impregnated with activated carbon, which is what you would put in if you were going to deal with a, a, an odor problem. There's two types of filters. That kit looks like this. This is 227-59208. I thought I'd open this before we started shooting this scene, guys. Sorry about that. All right, and all that's in here is this is the cover that's normally supposed to go here and get bolted in. Self-tapping screw and then a copy of this service bulletin in instruction format. And that's what I'm going to be doing today is showing you how to do this procedure. So first let me show you how to get access to this and remove the, the base cover that covers this and then we'll come back and get started on this job. All right, guys, the first thing we're going to want to do, because we're going to be working down there for a while, is we want to turn the dome light off, right? So you want to come over on this side, push this button so that it turns it off so we don't run the battery down. Sorry, go. All right, guys, so to get this cover off, whether we're going to change a filter if it's already on there or to get this out of the way so we can do the retrofit, we're first going to have to remove some 7-millimeter fasteners. So let me show you where those are at. So the first one is going to be over on the corner here on this passenger side. I'll use the mirror here to see, All right? So there's one seven millimeter bolt. And then if we pan over towards the driver's side, there's the second seven millimeter bolt. Now the third one is up under here, but we're gonna take the first two out and then I'll show you the other one because these first two are all you need to uh, get off if you're just gonna be changing the filter. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these two and then we'll come back when we get them out. All right, just about got this one off here. Just using a little hand wheel ratchet. And so you can see with just those two out, right, this guy's flexible enough that he'll come down where you can get in here if all you're trying to do is replace the the filter itself, right? The filter would normally be here, but you know, we've got this, we got this plate here and that's what we're going to be retrofitting. So normally you got plenty of room with just two out to get this filter in. Now, it, you, if you want to get this whole thing out so you have more room to get in here with tools and cut this, we got to get a third bolt that's back in the back here. To get that off, we're going to have to remove this panel. So let's reposition the camera and get this panel off and show you that third bolt. All right, guys, so Here's, hopefully this is good light for you all. We're going to take a trim tool first, work our way underneath here. Actually, you know what, we might just be able to reach our hand under here. Get this guy right here. And... There 
There's one. There's two. All right, there's two here, which are just these metal push-in type clips. And then the guy on the top is a real pisser. Let me get myself situated here a little bit more. It's not a, it's not a clip, it's a tab. But we've got to get this raised up enough to get that tab out. So you can see there's like a little ledge on this thing. You got to get your tool under here, lift it up, then it'll flex out. Now if this out of the way, let me see if I can get our a light down here where it'll work for you guys. And then we'll show where that third screw is. There he is, guys. That guy right there. You got to get up in with a ratchet and a seven millimeter socket and pull him. Alright guys, with this guy out, it's a real pain to get him out, but when he's out, then we can take this cover all the way off and give ourselves maximum room to do this job. it will also be a chance to clean out any debris you might have on it. Alright guys, to do the lengthwise cuts, the long cuts, I'm going to use this 90 degree attachment on my variable speed Dremel tool. right? And we're going to be using a plastic rated cutting wheel here. So you got to make sure you use a plastic rated one. We're going to want to use that because it's going to cut down on the debris that's, get, that's thrown up here and it's also going to be better for the heat problem that we're going to have. We're going to use a relatively low RPM. So I'm going to get the camera set up here, show you do those two cuts and make sure you put something down on the floor because you're probably going to have a lot of debris on that. When we get the longitudinal cuts done with this tool, what I'm going to switch to for the corners and the ends is I'm just going to be using a butane torch heating up an X-Acto knife, right? We're just going to whoosh, whoosh, just cut those corners off and then we get that piece out and then we'll do some finished sanding and then we'll be ready to clean up inside there and pop the filter in. So hopefully you guys get the uh, the gist of what we're going to do. I'm going to have to move the camera out of the way in order to get into this whole section. We're going to go ahead and make that cut and then we'll come back. stage guys I'm going to switch to my butane torch and my exacto knife
what we're going to be doing here is just going to be heating up the blade. We're going to use that to slice through the plastic. So I'm going to do that off camera. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to get this guy cherry red. So we can cut through this plastic like butter. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to block your view in a lot of these situations just to get this job done. Alright guys, so what you'll find, just a little another tip here, you'll find that there's an electrical device in the way of the elbow for this guy right in the middle. You can remove that, but what I chose instead, since it's only about an inch that you're not able to cut with the wheel, you can come up with a, a small hacksaw blade with something like this. You know, whatever kind of tool you want to improvise, but I finished off those one inch pieces in the middle that were obstructed for using the Dremel with a tool like this. So, you know, just be prepared to have several different tools, right? We've got the Dremel, we've got this, and then we've got the X-Acto knife and the butane torch to get the corners. And that's what we'll use to get that strip off. All right, guys, here's where we're at at this point. I think at this point, we might be able to prize this down with the X-Acto knife. There we go. And we've gotten it cut off here. Now, the next thing we're going to want to do is you know, clean up the rough edges on the inside. See if this light this light any better for you guys. All right, we're going to want to clean this off, and then we're going to want to get inside here and see what kind of debris we've got inside. But I'm just going to work that very last corner off so we can get this piece of plastic that we've cut off, and then we'll be ready to start doing the finishing work and cleaning it up, making it smooth. All right, guys, this is where we're at with that piece removed, and we've done a little bit of cleaning up on the cut and then now what we're going to have to want to put our attention to is inside here if I can get you guys a view inside a little bit of a glare but we got to get this evaporator all cleaned off from not having a filter in here so that's the next thing that we're going to go tackle we're going to get a toothbrush in here and a vacuum and get all of this crud off of here before we install the filter all right, guys, we vacuumed up from our shavings, and I'm just going to be running this brass brush up and down the evaporator fins just to make sure we can get any small dirt and debris. And you can see I've got a small grocery plastic bag down here to catch whatever we knock down. And we're just going to work that, inspecting it visually as we go, and then we're also going to be using an old toothbrush so that we can grind in there even a little bit more. Now, there's some spray cleaners and things you can spray in here. I'm just not a fan of them. If you, if you have a really bad problem and an odor, then I probably would recommend them. But we don't have any kind of problem like that that we're dealing with this owner's vehicle. We're just cleaning up basically leaves and dirt is all I've seen in here. And one small bird feather, however that got in here. So that's all we're going to do. You can see this is kind of full of light dirt and, and, and grime from the road from you know 10 years of not having a filter in here. So we're going to continue doing this and then we're going to stick a nozzle of a vacuum up in here. Then we're going to continue doing this and we're going to keep doing that until we can visually feel like we've gotten all that debris off and then we'll come back and we'll show buttoning this guy up. Alright guys, I just wanted to give you a shot at the evaporator so we can see what we cleaned off here between the toothbrush and the pipe brush. And we also got up here with a vacuum, some compressed air, and we also got up here with a couple of chopsticks and some wet shop towels, right? We just want to manually get all this debris off. Leaves, hair, feathers, any kind of clumped up debris. We're not looking to make this thing look like a brand new piece of aluminum fresh off the AC Delco assembly line or anything like that. This is what I would be aiming for, so that's why I wanted to share it with you. Like I said, if you have an odor problem, then you have to go a little bit more and you have to use a chemical. And I'll put a link to the description to the kind of chemical I would recommend if you've got an odor problem. If you don't have an odor problem, what I did here I think is fine. All right, so let's uh, pull back, get the filter in there, get the cover installed, and get everything buttoned up. All right, guys, we're going to go with the standard filter, the 22759203 that we saw in the service bulletin. That's the GM number or an AC Delco CF194. Already open this guy up. 
All right, so installing this, one end of this guy is going to have uh, a pull tab right there and right there. So that's the bottom. And like we saw in the service bulletin, these cuts in the pleating is for being able to bend it so that you can get it in here. All right. Give it a little of a bend so you can get it to fit. And then we're just going to work it up in there. Again, we're going to keep our little tabs out so that we can remove it. And then we're going to fold them under the cover. So the cover's got a lip that's going to go into the notch that's already there and then we're going to have to run the seven millimeter bolt that's included. So like I say, you're just going to push these guys over with the, the cup, the cover. It would help if I put it in right side up, guys. Foam side faces the filter. Didn't notice I had it upside down. And if you do, she won't fit, right? So she's going to sit just like that. Then we're going to take the Oh, seven millimeter self-tapping screw they gave us. All right, guys, this actually, uh, this socket, if it is metric, is between six and seven, so maybe a six and a half, but it actually works out okay to use a one quarter. So 14 inch pounds or the snug test, right? So we're just showing how much flex we've got with that foam. We don't want to like crush anything here. That's fine, right? You don't need to, you know, torque this thing all the way down crazy. It's just going into plastic and you're going to have to have this last a long time to replace this. So my, my take on these kind of things is the two finger test, right? You turn it until it's hard to turn with two fingers on whatever tool you're using and you're done. So now let's go get our black cover back on. We'll give it a test to make sure we got good airflow and then we should be able to wrap this up. All right, guys, we've got the first two screws back in. Now, for this last one in the upper corner, I recommend you do something like put some painter's tape like I've done here to help hold it. And then what you'll be able to see, I've got the flashlight here, and I'm going to have you come in at a different angle here in a moment, and I'm going to show you how you can at least see how you can get this thing lined up. All right, guys, first tip is get you a shop rag and plug it into this open gap where the carpet is. There's a good chance you might drop this screw and then it's going to go for a run and you'll waste a lot of time trying to retrieve it. So plug that in there first. Then I'm going to have you pan up on top above this cover. All right, guys, if we pull this guy down, we look inside, we can see the other end of that boss, right? And so what you can do is you thread your screw up. You'll be able to reach under and see that it comes through there. And then it's going to line up right at the top there. If we zoom in. It's going to line up right at the top there. And that's how you know you can get it started okay. I can't actually show it because we actually have to close this up to actually put it in, but hopefully you'll get the idea from that. All right, once you've got that one also at the two finger snug piece, we can put this trim panel back in. We want to make sure we get it into that top slot. And you guys, I'm not going to be able to show you, but you'll know when you do it. Get in the top slot, get these two clips back in. And that is it. We are good to go. All three of these. I'll roll the torque value for these screws at the bottom, but um, you know, it, the two finger snug thing is perfectly fine when you got plastic like this that you're going to be taking off frequently. And again, we've done a blower test. We're getting good airflow. We've made sure we don't have air leaks around the foam seal. And so this modification or rather this retrofit is complete. I hope this helped you out. If you got questions about how we did this, go ahead and leave a question below and I'll try to help. If this helped you do this job yourself, saved you some money, or just taught you something you didn't know about, pay it forward and hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. And as always, thanks for watching.